Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about unsupervised learning and its application in hyperspectral imaging. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about unsupervised learning and its applications in hyperspectral imaging. Machine learning is a broad field that encompasses various techniques and approaches to enable computers to learn from data. It can be categorized into three main types. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is the most common form of machine learning. It involves training models on labeled data sets where the input data has corresponding outputs. This approach is used in applications like classification and regression. Unsupervised learning is different from supervised learning. Here, the data does not have labels and the goal is to find hidden patterns or intrinsic structures within the data. Unsupervised learning is used in clustering, anomaly detection, and dimensionality reduction. Reinforcement learning is where an agent learns to make decisions by taking actions in an environment to maximize cumulative rewards. It's commonly applied in robotics, game playing, and self-driving cars. Unsupervised learning deals with analyzing data that lacks predefined labels. It is useful for exploring the underlying patterns and associations in data sets making it ideal for scenarios where labeling is impractical, expensive, or infeasible. The goal is to understand the structure of a data groups similar items together and reduce the complexity. In unsupervised learning, the two most widely used techniques are clustering and dimensionality reduction. Clustering involves grouping data points into clusters based on their similarities. Examples include k-means clustering and Gaussian mixture models. Dimensionality reduction, on the other hand, focuses on reducing the number of variables under consideration by transforming the data into a lower dimensional space while retaining important features. Examples include principal component analysis and minimum noise fraction, or MNF. Clustering is a core concept in unsupervised learning that groups data points into clusters based on their similarities. The objective is to make sure that data points within the same cluster are more similar to each other than to those in other clusters. Clustering is used in various applications from customer segmentation in marketing to anomaly detection in network security. Two popular clustering methods are k-means clustering and Gaussian mixture models, which we will explain in the context of hyperspectral imaging. K-means is a straightforward and efficient clustering algorithm that divides the data into a predefined number of clusters. It works through the following steps, first initialization, second assignment, third update, and fourth iteration. In initialization, the algorithm randomly selects k centroids. The centroids are points that represent the center of each cluster. In the assignment stage, the algorithm assigns each data point to the nearest centroid based on a distance metric like Euclidean distance. In the update stage, the algorithm recalculates the centroids as the mean of the points in each cluster. And in iteration stage, the algorithm repeats the assignment and update steps until the centroids are no longer changing. K-means clustering is particularly useful when the data forms spherical clusters of similar sizes. In hyperspectral imaging, this can help in segmenting different regions based on their spectral properties. For example, distinguishing between different types of vegetation, minerals, or other materials based on how they reflect light. Gaussian mixture models, on the other hand, take a probabilistic approach to clustering. Unlike k-means which assigns each data point strictly to one cluster, the Gaussian mixture model estimates the probability that each point belongs to each cluster. It assumes the data is generated from a mixture of Gaussian distributions and works through the following steps. Initialization, expectation step or E step, maximization step or M step, and iteration. In the initialization step, the algorithm defines the initial parameters for the Gaussian distributions like means, covariances, and weights. In the expectation step, the algorithm calculates the probability of each data point belonging to each Gaussian distribution. In the maximization step, the algorithm updates the parameters of the Gaussian distributions based on the probabilities computed in the E step. In the iteration step, the algorithm repeats the E step and M step until convergence. The Gaussian mixture models can model clusters of different shapes, densities, and sizes, making it more flexible than k-means. It is useful for hyperspectral imaging when clusters are not spherical or when there is overlap between clusters. Hyperspectral imaging captures images across hundreds of narrow spectral bands, providing detailed information about the spectral characteristics of each pixel. This makes HSI incredibly useful in fields such as agriculture, mineral exploration, environmental monitoring, and defense. 
However, the high dimensionality of hyperspectral data poses significant challenges. The first challenge is data redundancy. Many of the spectral bands can have overlapping information leading to redundancy. The second challenge is high dimensionality. The sheer volume of data which consists of hundreds of spectral bands makes processing and analysis difficult. And the third challenge is lack of labeled data. Labeling hyperspectral data can be labor intensive and expensive. These challenges make unsupervised learning particularly relevant. Clustering techniques can be applied to group pixels with similar spectral characteristics revealing patterns and helping to classify materials. Meanwhile, dimensionality reduction techniques can reduce the complexity of the data, making it easier to analyze and interpret. To address the challenge of high dimensionality in hyperspectral imaging, dimensionality reduction techniques such as principal component analysis and maximum noise fraction transformations are used. Principal component analysis or PCA transforms the data into a set of orthogonal components or principal components that capture the most variance in the data. By reducing the data to a few principal components, the dimensionality is lowered and redundant information is minimized. Minimum noise fraction or MNF is similar to PCA but also considers noise in the data. It separates the signal from the noise providing a more robust dimensionality reduction for noisy data sets like hyperspectral images. This enables clustering algorithms like K-means and Gaussian mixture models to work more efficiently as they can operate on a smaller subset of important features. Unsupervised learning is a powerful tool that can reveal hidden patterns and associations in data, especially when labeled data is unavailable. Techniques like K-means clustering and Gaussian mixture models can help uncover structure in complex data sets, making them ideal for applications such as hyperspectral imaging. In the context of hyperspectral imaging, clustering can help segment regions based on spectral properties, aiding in tasks like material identification, agricultural monitoring, and environmental analysis. Dimensionality reduction techniques further enhance this process by reducing data complexity, leading to faster and more efficient processing. Let's go to Python to show you an example of an unsupervised learning in hyperspectral image clustering. In this example, I'm going to be comparing k-means with Gaussian mixture model. Okay, here's the script for today's code. As you can see, first we import the libraries that we need. And this is the function that does the MNF. MNF, as I said, is similar to PCA, but it also considers the noise. And this is where my data is located. And this is where I'm going to be loading the hyperspectral image using the spectral library. I'm going to be excluding the last band from my hyperspectral data because the last band has some NAND values. You might not have to do this. And this is where I'm going to be reducing the dimensionality using MNF. I'm going to be using the first 10 components for clustering. I'm going to be reshaping the data. And this is where I'm going to be applying k-means. And I'm going to assume I have 9 clusters. So one thing with k-means is you have to know the number of clusters. So if you know the number of end members or the pure materials in your hyperspectral image, you could just use that as a number of clusters. And I'm going to also be using Gaussian mixture model for clustering. And then I'm going to be reshaping the cluster labels into the original image shape. This is where I'm going to be defining the class names. This is optional. And then I'm going to be plotting the results for both k-means and Gaussian mixture model. Let's run it and see what happens. As you can see, the last band in my data set contains NAND values, and I have already excluded that. You should also pay attention that the format of my hyperspectral data is NV, as you could tell here. Okay, the run is complete. As you can see, this is k-means clustering, and this is Gaussian mixture model clustering. And this is the result for nine clusters. I like the result with the Gaussian mixture model better. It seems to have led to a better result than k-means clustering. This is the data that I've used a lot in my videos, and I'm using the same data for this video as well. You could also access the code using the link in the description section of my video. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.